G'day legends, Jackson here from Mudmates and Mayhem. Today I'm going to do a bit of a walkthrough on my 2010 PK Ranger. Um, hope you guys enjoy. We'll start with the bar work. I've got a um, ARB Deluxe bar on the front here with the scrub bars and the side steps all the way down the back just to protect the sides and to protect the sills down the bottom here. Um, and to mount my worn 9,500 pound winch on the front here, it's currently uh, out of operation because of a bit of a situation we got into a couple of weeks back, but it's in the process of being fixed. Um, moving on to the lights, I'm running the ARB Extreme Sport Spot and Spread Beam driving lights on the bull bar here. Um, and up the top, I've got the IPF by ARB as well. I've got two spots up there and two spreads, just to help the driving lights up the front here, throw that light a little bit further to see any, any animals further on the side of the road or in the, in the scrub on the side of the road. Moving on to the side over here to the snorkel, I'm running the uh, Ford factory snorkel um, just because it fits the car a lot nicer I think than the safari snorkel. One thing that I don't like about this snorkel though is the fact that the head up here you can't reverse on those dusty roads. Um, that's one reason why I'd probably change it to a safari snorkel uh, just so that I can reverse that head when I'm in a convoy on a dusty road to avoid that bull dust getting into the intake system. Just moving on to the wheels and the suspension setup that we've got. We're running the uh, four inch lift kit with the dropper bracket in there by Skyjacker. I'm running um, opposite lock front shocks uh, and tough dog shocks in the rear. These front ones though, they're adjustable as you can see down the bottom there, um, just to help on those really rough roads and when you're rock crawling to dampen it even dampen the ride even further um haven't really had a chance to play with it as yet um but in the in the process of testing that out at the moment actually in the rear same thing four inch lift but the leaf springs are sitting on two inch poly blocks as you can see there um and it's got the extended two inch shackles up there too with a with those tough dog shocks um, the rating for these leafs is actually 300 kilos um, just so that when it's loaded up it softens that ride a lot a lot more and helps me handle a lot better um, especially when we're towing so with the wheels we're running 16 inch CSA Raptor alloys uh, covered in 265.75.16 uh, caps and practical max mud terrain tires I run these just because they were the cheapest at the time. I'm looking at getting something a little bit beefier and a little bit uh, more hardy, just so that it can last that little bit longer and get us into those tougher situations and get us out of those tougher situations. Mind you, I've had no problems with these tires at all. You let them down low enough and they'll get you out of pretty much anything. I've had no flats, had no, had no troubles with their grip or anything like that. So I would recommend them for anybody who's looking at a cheaper sort of tire, um, but yeah, like I said, we're looking at maybe like a BFG or a, or a Cooper or something similar to those ones just to get that extra mileage out of them. Up the top here on the roof, we're running a Rhino Rack, just the alloy one, just to throw any swags up or any wood or any gazebos or anything that we want to take with this camping. Moving on to the back here, we run um, just the Rhino Rack bars again, um, but on top of that we've put some alloy mesh to house our solar panel and our max tracks and our, over the other side our high lift jack like you can see. Um, I'm running three aerials, you'll, you'll see that in a minute when I do the interior but um, they have all each a purpose um, and along the side here as you can see we're running the fox wing uh, awning that wraps right around the back of the car. So as I said we've got the three aerials, um, these three aerials up the top are both the two outside ones are for the two UHFs. The one in the middle is for a phone cradle that I had in there, but I've currently um, removed that in looking for something else to put in there. Um, and up the front, we've also got two more aerials. The one on the left hand side is for the AM FM radio so that we can listen to the footy when we're in the bush. Um, and the one on the right hand side is for the CB radio. So we'll put um, bigger antennas on them when we go touring and things like that. So we get that little bit of extra coverage. As well as everything else we've got on the racks up here, we've got also got two lights just to help with reversing and setting up camp at nighttime. They are on an individual switch inside the cab. 
Uh, along the side here, like I said, we've got our high lift jack mount. Um, we've got a shovel mount on the front here just to dig us out of any bogs that we get into. Up the back here, we've just got the factory Ranger plastic bumper. Um, in the future, we want to upgrade to probably a ARB steel rear bar, just to give the tub a little bit of extra protection um, on those tight tracks. On the bottom here, we've got uh, Anderson plug, just your usual trailer plug, and your tow hitch. Um, currently got the recovery hitch on there. Um, up here, I've got my reversing camera, um, which comes on when I put the car into reverse, um, and pops up on the screen on the dash, as you will see a bit later on. Moving on to the canopy, we are running just the fiberglass ARB canopy. Um, to keep all of our stuff nice and dry and safe. It's lockable, um, just to allow us to keep all those, all those things that we want to keep secure, nice and secure. Um, up the top, I've got a constant camera that runs to my rear vision mirror. Um, because I've got shelves in the back here, I can't see out the rear window, so we've got um, the camera up there so we've got a constant feed to the front of the car and see what's behind us at all times. Moving on to the inside of the canopy now. Um, we've got a custom set of rear drawers here. It's just a single drawer that pulls right out. Um, just to house anything that we really want to keep nice and secure. Currently got things in there like cooking utensils and um, I've got my air compressor hose and a few tools and bits and pieces in there um, just to keep them out of the way um, so that they're not getting under our feet or anything like that. Um, running a MSA 60 litre fridge drop slide. Um, as you can see, the fridge isn't currently in here, um, but it drops down and brings the, brings the fridge nice and low. Bring you guys in a bit closer to have a bit of a better look. Um, up the back there, as you can see, we've got the shelving unit, um, which I keep anything on that I don't need easy access to, like my camp chairs or the kids' porta cots or anything like that. I've actually got my compressor up there at the moment. As you can see, it blocks the back window, and that's why we need that rear camera, so we can see out the back and anything that's behind us. Um, I keep my tool bag in here all the time, um, just in case I need my tools. Um, my fridge slide here, as you can see, it's actually got my recovery gear on it at the moment. Um, the fridge is at home. On the sides here, we've got some pockets that we keep. On this side, I keep my recovery gear and some D shackles and a few bits and pieces in there. And on this side is all the electrical stuff that connects to the battery that's under the back that I'll show you in a second. Um, a bit of a closer look at the drawer. As you can see, it's a full width. Um, of the system, it pulls right out, it's a nice length, keep lots of stuff in here, as you can see I've got um, a few bits and pieces in the back there, a few extra um, hoses if need be, um, fuel filter in the back there, I've got uh, my tyre repair kit, um, my drill, a few other bits and pieces, my um, spare bolts and things like that, um, normally we keep our cooker in here in this big compartment, um, but yeah, we just everything with the with the awning and things like that, um, just to keep them out of the way to declutter the, the canopy space. So up the front of the canopy here, um, under this little compartment, we have our dual battery set up. We're running the Redback Thumper 120 amp hour battery as our second battery, and the C-Tech dual battery charger. Um, we have the solar panel running into the battery charger there that charges this battery as we're stationary or set up camp um, and it's also hooked up to the alternator as well so the auxiliary battery and this battery um, charge as the car runs. We've had no troubles at all with this battery, um, would recommend it to anybody um, but we are looking at putting a third battery in just next to it there, there's plenty of space just to get that little bit of extra time out in the bush so we can stay there for a, a week or so more if we need to. Moving on into the front seat of the car, uh, we've got a little bit going on in here. Um, I'll give you guys a look. So over on the passenger side here, we've got our uh, GME 40 channel UHF. Um, down in the footwell, we've got our battery monitor, which monitors the two batteries, the main starter battery and the second battery in the back that runs the fridge um, and has the solar panel hooked up to it. Um, over in the driver's side here, we're running a EDS scan gauge, which I run my um, 
coolant temperature, my intake temperature, uh, my voltage and my RPMs. Um, have my compressor switch and rear locker switch, um, which gets us unstuck, which is a handy thing to have. Um, I'll show you guys the reverse camera. Um, just chuck the car in reverse. Pops up like that. And you can also see up the top here is the camera um, that's on the roof rack as well. Up the top here, we've got our full overhead console. Um, it houses our second UHF and a CB radio as well. Uh, we run this many radios um, because when we do a lot of touring, um, we want to be able to make sure that we can contact people if we need to. Um, in the center here, we've got um, some gauges, boost gauge, EGT gauge, and coolant temp gauge. Um, none of them actually work at the moment. Um, and up here, we've got switches for um, the lights on the roof, um, the rear lights, and the lights on the bull bar too. I'll do a quick setup of the Fox Wing to show you how easy it is to set up just with the one person. Um, shouldn't be any more than two minutes set up, I don't think. So that didn't take any more than two minutes to set up just with one person. Um, it's a perfect thing if you want to get out of the rain or out of the, out of the sun. Um, and cook your lunch just sort of at a roadside stop or um, even if it's for camp. Um, we have two walls that we zip onto it as well um, for those extra long camps to give us that bit more space to put the swag under or for the kids to play under um, and that you're guaranteed to have a little bit of shade. Um, I haven't parked in the perfect spot today to get the perfect shade um, but yeah if you park in the right spot um, you have no troubles with getting um, amples amount of shade uh, for you and your family to sit under um, whether it be for the rain or for getting out of the sun. So that's that for this video. I hope you enjoyed my walkthrough of my 2010 PK Ford Ranger. Um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see a bit more content like this um, hit that subscribe button and we hope to get a lot more content out there in the next few months. Um, for you guys, we love doing this sort of thing. Um, we love four wheel driving and camping and it's our passion. Um, it's a bit of a lifestyle for us. Um, so yeah, thanks guys.